This is a recording of our playbook. Download the playbook, configuration spreadsheet, and ABA lab environment from our website. Welcome to our whiteboard drawing, Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, Dial Plan for Mobility. In this drawing, we'll look at a dial plan for mobile users with multiple devices. We deploy extension mobility, device mobility, and mobile connect. For an overview of the Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, see our drawing, Dial Plan Build Overview. The configuration for the Enterprise 20 cluster used for this training can be viewed here. A username and password to log in is provided here. Remember our objectives for the dial plan from the discussion in dial plan overview. In this drawing, we focus on the objective, users can be mobile. If users roam to a site, then all dialing, internal and external, from call lists and call forwarding as well, works just like it does at that site. See dial plan end user training for a look at this from the end user perspective. How do things work when users roam? Does internal dialing work like at the home site or at the roaming site? Does external dialing work like at the home site or at the roaming site? Do some external calls work like at the roaming site, 911 for example, but other external calls work like at the home site? Does call forwarding work like at the home site or at the roaming site? Do speed dials work when we roam? What about mobile connect? single number reach. What about call lists? Can we still return calls with one-click dialing? Do we send the right caller ID? So many questions. What about different kinds of roaming devices? Extension mobility profiles, soft phones like CIPC, and wireless phones, or even hard phones. Do all roaming devices work the same way? Do we want them to work the same way? We'll use the word roam for both devices roaming with device mobility and extension mobility profile logins. How do you want it to work? It's your choice to some extent, but remember, you need to explain how things work to users and configuring and managing the solution has to be practical. And remember this, the North American numbering plan is ancient. It was developed in the 1940s. For perspective, around the same time in 1946, the first general purpose electronic computer was developed, the U.S. Army's Ballistic Research Laboratory's ENIAC. In 1981, legend has it that Bill Gates said, 640K ought to be enough for anybody. The NANP was in its fourth decade at that time, and that was 33 years ago. We can only do so much with such old technology. This drawing has four parts about mobility, dialing from mobile devices, call forwarding from a mobile device, and AAR and CFER for roaming devices and final fixes. How do things work when users roam? We'll explore mobility for user Chloe Campbells. Chloe works in the Montreal office and has an extension mobility profile she uses with her work phone in Montreal and for roaming. CIPC for roaming, some users may have wireless phones, and a remote destination profile for single number reach, Mobile Connect. This drawing looks at the dial plan for mobility. The dial plan component of mobility requires some thought. Configuring extension mobility, device mobility, or mobile connect is not complicated once the dial plan is in place. The requirement to obtain the subnets for all your voice networks for device mobility can make this tedious. Other drawings will discuss mobility in more detail and its configuration. We included a basic configuration for device mobility in our configuration playbooks a single device mobility group, NANP, DMG, physical locations for each site, XXX, FIS, device mobility info for each site, XXX, DMI, and extension mobility and remote destination profiles. 
We've configured the lines on Chloe's CIPC and Extension Mobility Profile exactly the same. When roaming, Chloe can use either CIPC or Extension Mobility, whichever is more convenient. Or she can use both. Notice that the line appearances are identical on these devices. We think it will be confusing if they operate differently while roaming. Chloe's cell phone, 514-460-0000, is configured as her remote destination. Remember, we need to put a 9 in front of this when we configure the destination number. This is what it looks like in the user web pages. When someone calls Chloe at 8-573-6001, her cell phone, 514-460-0000, will also ring after a short delay. Let's test Mobile Connect. We'll call 8-573-6001 from Oakville. When we call Chloe at 8-573-6001, after a short time, her cell phone, 514-460-0000, will also ring. Chloe's EM profile works the same way. We tested it when line 8573-6001 was not shared with her CIPC. What happens when Chloe roams to the Halifax site using extension mobility or roams with CIPC and device mobility? The CIPC and EM profiles look the same. Should they behave the same? We have at the Halifax site, Chloe's CIPC with device mobility, Chloe's EM profile logged into a phone, and Halifax phones. How do these different devices behave, and how will we explain the behavior to our users? There are two kinds of patterns to test, site-specific, Patterns that have site-specific routing local to a site, including site-abbreviated dialing and local 7 and 10 digit dialing. E911 and service codes fit this category. And global. Patterns that are global, including internal numbers which are global for the enterprise, and long distance and international patterns that can be successfully routed out any gateway in the enterprise. These two kinds of patterns have different behavior. Do we want Chloe's devices to behave like devices at the Halifax site where she has roamed, or like devices at her home Montreal site? We think this would be the easiest to explain to users. All phones at a site work the same way whether they are roamed there or not. This was our objective for mobility. If you roam to a site, then all dialing, internal and external, from call lists and call forwarding as well, works just like it does at that site. It turns out that this cannot be implemented with CUCM version 9.1.2. Another option that would be easy to explain, your phone always works the same way, no matter where it is. But this would make dialing local 7 and 10 digit numbers at roaming sites confusing, and we don't want 911 to work like at the Montreal site when we roam to Halifax. Something like this would be a nightmare. How would we explain this to users? What would our end user training look like? How do users exchange numbers at a site where some are roaming and some are not? If users need a table to look up dialing behavior, then we have failed, epically failed. This has to be as simple as possible. Remember, we have calling search spaces on the line and on the device. This matters for mobility. There are two approaches to class of service, line device or blocking on lines, that's two names for the same thing, or traditional online. We're really not sure what they should be called because it's not really line only. E.164 is a special case we'll look at later. 
In this drawing, we look at the line device dial plan we've been working on in the Enterprise 20 dial plan build. The line device, or blocking on lines approach to class of service, uses both the calling search space on the device, phones in particular, and the calling search space on the lines. The device gets a site-specific unrestricted calling search space. The line gets a global blocking calling search space. Global meaning we have one set of calling search spaces to use for all of our sites. Because the line partitions take priority over the device partitions, we can take away calling privileges by blocking the patterns on the line. We looked at this in detail in our Blocking on Lines class of service drawing and then in the Patterns for No Delayed Dialing drawing. Does putting patterns on the line or on the device make a difference to roaming behavior? Patterns on the line always stay the same when roaming. Line partitions take priority over device partitions. Patterns on the device and the local route group can change when roaming. Extension mobility users always inherit the device configuration at the roaming site. In soft phones like CIPC, in any physical devices that roam, can use device mobility to inherit a device configuration from a roaming site device pool. Remember the patterns and dial plan hierarchy we built for device calling search spaces. Roaming users inherit the device calling search space of the roaming device pool. Each site will have a site-specific unrestricted calling search space, XXX unrestricted calling search space containing the internal partition, the site-specific internal partition, XXX internal partition in the drawing, the NANP partition, and the site-specific external partition, XXX local areas partition. We have a pattern with the XXX local areas 11 route filter to handle E.164 gateways. We remove the delay for seven digit dialing by replacing the general 10 digit patterns with site specific patterns for the local area codes using the 9.at with XXX local areas 10 route filter. We will see that site specific abbreviated dialing and seven and 10 digit external patterns cause us grief when roaming. Using the local route group in the NANP PSTN route list means use the route group in the device pool. Phones in Montreal will use the Montreal 57 PSTN route group containing the Montreal 57 PSTN gateway. Phones in Hamilton will use the Hamilton 601 PSTN route group containing the Hamilton 601 PSTN gateway. And phones in Halifax will use the Halifax 696 PSTN route group containing the Halifax 696 PSTN gateway. Each site has a route group containing the local PSTN gateway that will be used to route calls for devices at that site. Roaming devices normally use the roaming site local route group. Remember the blocking translation patterns and dial plan hierarchy we've built for line calling search spaces. Roaming devices use the same global patterns configured on the line, wherever they roam. A user with line 8-691-4100 logged into the Saskatchewan 902 site, where the device has a device-specific unrestricted calling search space, will have access to all the device patterns minus the patterns blocked on the line. A different user with line 8-691-4127 logged into the Saskatchewan 902 site, where the device has the same calling search space, will have access to all the device patterns minus the patterns blocked on that line. Line calling privileges roam with the user. Here's the device configuration for Chloe's CIPC. The dial plan configuration elements are, the device pool is set to Montreal 57 CIPC phones device pool. The calling search space is set to Montreal 57 unrestricted calling search space. The AAR calling search space is set to Montreal 57 PSTN gateway calling search space and the AAR group is set to NANP AARG. Here's the roaming configuration for the Montreal 57 CIPC phones device pool. All sites have similar configurations. We haven't yet added media resource group list configuration to the deployment. 
Some notes on the configuration. In production, the calling search space would be set to Montreal 57 unrestricted no 911 calling search space for the CIPC device pools. We don't want soft phones dialing 911. In production, we would configure a media resource group list, MRGL. Extension mobility and devices roaming with device mobility inherit the site-specific MRGL. We'll get to media resource configuration in later drawings. Here's the directory number information and settings for Chloe's line 85736001. We set the line calling search space to line unrestricted calling search space so we can test dialing all kinds of numbers. We looked at two scenarios for call forwarding in our call forwarding drawing. A simple option where users configure call forward all and we configure all other destinations as go to voicemail and a more complicated scenario with additional requirements for user self-service configuration and additional destinations. We'll look at the more complicated call forwarding scenario here. Enterprise 20 has these requirements. Whatever we do, it had better be easy to explain to our users. We'll never allow forwarding to E911. Some users expect to configure forward all, forward busy, and forward no answer destinations themselves. We will allow call forwarding to local numbers in all cases. We will allow call forwarding to long distance numbers if the user has to log in to configure the destination. Remember that our long distance class of service blocks high risk area codes. We need to configure lines differently for different kinds of users. This is what the Cisco Unified CM Administration directory number page looks like for a Montreal DN with our call forwarding final fixes and the destinations initially set to go to voicemail. We'll adjust the calling search spaces and destinations for testing. Here are the settings for Chloe's remote destination profile. The calling search space is left blank for the moment for illustration. This calling search space is used for mobile voice access. We'll talk about that in another drawing. The rerouting calling search space is used for Mobile Connect to control what remote destinations are valid. The line calling search space has nothing to do with Mobile Connect. We use a forwarding calling search space as discussed in the call forwarding drawing. This playbook is continued in Dial Plan for Mobility Part 2. Part 2 discusses dialing from mobile devices.